If you've been strictly working in Photoshop for UI and UX design, you're not alone. I was in that club not too long ago until I decided to finally dive into Adobe XD. And very quickly did I realize how much faster I was able to work. And best of all, XD integrates seamlessly with Photoshop so you can bring in your existing designs and keep working. Opening your Photoshop documents in XD is as simple as opening your XD documents in XD. You can drag the file right onto the icon or use the open option under the file menu. Once it's all loaded in, you'll notice that just about everything transferred over correctly. If your Photoshop file does contain advanced layer styles or certain filters, they may not appear at the moment, but support for many of these are coming in future releases. If you've never used Adobe XD before, don't fret. You may find much of the interface very familiar. Your artboards are front and center, your tools are to the left, and your properties are over to the right. If you've never used artboards in Photoshop, think of them like containers for the layers that will make up your various screens. And within a single document, you can have dozens, hundreds, or even thousands of artboards. Now you may be asking yourself, what about my layers? At the bottom left of the application, you'll find two icons, one for your assets and one for your layers. When you open up the layers panel for the first time, you'll see your artboards by default. But when you double click on one of them, all the containing layers will be displayed. And many are just like Photoshop's, vector shapes, type, raster layers, and groups. But there's one that Photoshop doesn't have, symbols. Although it does share some similarities with smart objects. For this, Let's explore the Assets panel. This is where you'll save your elements you plan on using throughout your document, including colors, character styles, and symbols. Since type layers transfer beautifully from Photoshop, I can immediately start making any necessary changes to the right. And if I wanted to quickly increase or decrease the size of the font, the handle below the text will let me do just that. Once I have my text just the way I like it, I can start populating my Assets panel. With any of the type layers selected, pressing the plus button beside colors and character styles will let me save both for future use. I can now select any other type layer and click on the saved character style to apply it. But what about symbols? A symbol can be made up of a single layer or multiple layers. And just like a smart object in Photoshop, it will appear as one. Let's use the nav bar as an example, since it'll likely be used across multiple artboards. Back in the Layers panel, I'm going to select all the elements that make up the navigation. And then I can either use the Command or Control K shortcut, or hop back into my Assets panel and press the plus button beside Symbols. You'll notice that a single symbol has been added containing all the elements that make up the navbar, which I'm able to rename by double-clicking on the existing name. This will help me not only identify my symbols, but with the search function available at the top, I'll be able to quickly find my assets once my panel becomes filled with colors, character styles, and other symbols. Let me repeat this process one more time for the shopping icon. With the layers selected, Command-K will turn it into a symbol, allowing me to quickly add additional copies throughout my document. Now, how does a symbol differ from a group? For one, it gives you quick access to objects you frequently use. But best of all, symbols allows you to keep all duplicates up to date. Let me quickly drag out another navbar onto this artboard. Now, imagine if you had a document that contained dozens of the same object that you wanted updated. Because they were placed as a symbol, I only have to update one. Double-clicking on a symbol will let me access its individual layers, and in this case, I want to change the background color. As I adjust the fill to the right, both navbars update at the same time. Another really neat benefit of symbols are their ability to swap. Let's say I wanted to change the design of this icon, and all other icons like it. I actually have something back in Photoshop that I think would work perfectly. Whether it's a vector shape or a rasterized image, I'm able to right-click on the layer in the Layers panel, choose Copy SVG, and then paste it right into Adobe XD. I can then turn it into a reusable symbol just like we did a few moments ago. And once it's saved in my Assets panel, dragging it right on top of an existing symbol will swap not only that one, but others that may exist throughout your document. Assets can also be added to your projects using Creative Cloud libraries, which you can find under the File menu. This empty square looks like it could use a little bit of company, so once I locate the image I want to use, a simple drag and drop fills the shape, and if I need to adjust the scaling, I can double click and make the necessary changes. 
So Adobe XD may seem a little bit different, but it's also very familiar, and it can certainly help supercharge your design workflows. If you have designs of your own you've been working on, bring them into XD and try it out for yourself, or feel free to download the project files included with this tutorial.